I went ahead and unmasked this and I had a couple little bleeds here and there. I took care of a few of them already. Uh, but the best way to get rid of them, uh, if you have Q-tips, especially get those kind of Q-tips that are pointy, they're makeup Q-tips, you can get them at most drugstores. They don't come in the big giant Q-tip box, but there's little pointy cotton swabs. Those things are great for doing touch-ups or uh, cleaning your airbrush out. In this situation, I didn't have any, so uh, take my little handy dandy stick and just wrap it. And uh, in that, put a little bit of cleaner on it, and I'm able to get into some of those areas and and you know, some of the bleeds, I had one up here, not that bad, and you can just clean it out. I didn't clean them all up because I'm gonna be buttoning up more paint up against it, but uh, I think it came out pretty cool looking. You know, you still wanted to have that wash look, and you can see definitely the contrast there. No, the only time this color is gonna be by itself is gonna be probably on the stock right here and some of the areas on the sides, because this is all getting color, and that's black right there. So we're gonna go on to the next uh, section, which is gonna be the lighter green, which is this color and this lower color here. So I'm gonna go ahead and mask off to paint this and this area here, same way I did before. Um, just lay the tape in along here on the bottom part, since I'm gonna be buttoned up against that. And then follow along from this end and kind of just follow that edge of the wood that's already there in the 3D print. Didn't have any lifting from the masking, which is always a good sign. Just a little bit of bleeding, you know, the opposite of lifting. You know, the tape uh, didn't lift any paint, but it did let some paint bleed through. So I can come in at this point for this section and just do the rip and tear technique of masking off and I probably won't even mask this whole piece off because I'll just keep the paint really directed towards that area. You don't even want to be really careful on leaving areas unmasked, but sometimes you realize, man, I don't need to spend all this time and effort on tape if I don't have a lot of area exposed. Let's keep on working all the way around. On the bottom, how am I gonna do that? You know, I'll probably just connect the dots and just go straight across like that. Really similar to what's already kind of there. Just leave that and then leave that area alone. I'm not gonna bring the color straight back. I'll just leave that the original color. And I have such good track record with this tape not lifting. I'm now a little bit braver. I'm not really that being that careful with the tape. I'm not concerned about it lifting. And if it did, I could fix it because I'm going with that rough thrash look anyway, so not that big a deal. Not the prettiest mask job ever, but hey, Clients don't appreciate the mask job, they appreciate the end result. So let me go ahead and continue on. And when I get this all done, I'll have this, this, and this ready to paint. We've got the Tiki Fet all masked up for its noggin up here and its two side areas. Make sure that tape is all pressed down. Remember how it likes to lift. And uh, the color I have here, I already have it mixed up from before on doing another video for my spray gun, but it's a combination of vile green, white, uh, I believe this is code blue. Yep, it's uh, Tim Gore's code blue and a little bit of the candy black mixed with that LVS uh, UVLS 4050 clear. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and have it in my Eclipse like I did before and just spray it. The things weigh so little I can actually pick it up, no problem. And spray it on here, going again in the direction of the wood grain. Leaving some areas alone. I want to be careful not to get too wet because I did have those bleeds before. So in those areas that'll bleed at, I won't get it wet. I'll get it wet in areas like here where there's nothing around it. Same thing over here. And we're gonna get the top head now as well. And I'm gonna follow it 
the same wood grain pattern as best I can at least. And I will use a scotch bright as I did before to scuff it up a little bit, take off some of the paint, give it more of a worn look. Okay. Use the same thrash scotch bright pad I had before and just come in and I'm not going to scrub back and forth because it might lift the tape a little bit, but I'll pull, pull it down to create the wear. Same thing here, put it in this direction away. Kind of digging that. If I really want to bring back, um, say if I have a towel here, there we go. I'm take a towel with a little bit of the 4011 on it. You could do this with a Q-tip too if we had the Q-tip, but we already realized we don't have Q-tips here. And pull a little bit of that color, wipe a little bit of it. This will be the area that will get the most worn, is this area on the top anyway, because it's got the most water damage from just water landing on it. Well, let's say you get so much of that, you're like, oh man, I took out too much color. Come back with the airbrush. No problem. You know what you can also do? Come back with your chip brush that we did before. We can bring back some wood grain if we really want to. Too much of it, wipe it off. So you can stack some of these effects. No reason why you can't. Kind of like that. Got a nice cool effect going on there. Looks like I can always come in and add more green if I need it. The more layers you add like this, the more depth you're going to create. More detail. It's going to look more realistic. You've got all this different, different stuff going on. And there's my, my green. Next thing we're going to do is unmask this, come in, do the dark green, and then last we're going to do the black and maybe come in and add a little bit of details here and there on it before we wrap her up. Okay, got this all unmasked. We didn't have uh, any bleed, so it came out really quite nicely. Um, if you do, you can always come in with a little, uh, your chip brush and kind of do a little bit of touch-ups. Actually, I did have a little bit of a peel right here because I really pressed the tape hard down here. I'll come in with some red a little bit later and touch that up, or I'll just leave it because it looks pretty good. And then uh, you can always come in with a little bit of paint on this brush and add some more texture, but I'm kind of digging the way it is. Next thing we're going to do is these two guys get green. There's also a little bit of green on this side and there's a little bit of swath of that dark green on that side. And I may actually come in and add a little bit of red right here just because in the original Boba Fett there's a slight gap of red there that's not shown on this sculpture. So I may do it just to kind of frame it a little bit better. Um, artistic license, you may say. And then uh, we'll be ready to spray the screen. So I'm going to go ahead and mask it off. And you don't need to watch the whole thing probably because you've seen this enough. You haven't learned to mask by now. I can't help you. Let me get this tape going here. Come on, come on. Maybe I need to watch how to mask. Okay, here we go. That's better. And I'm now when I'm going over an area that's already painted, I let a little bit of that paint show through. The reason being is I don't want a little peekaboo of nothing going on there. So I, I'll always do a little bit of a of a of a tape overlap or underlap. Let some of that paint peek through right there.
There we go. And then use my yellow tape to lock that sucker down. Same thing here. And I'll just continue on till I get this all ready to spray and then we'll come back and spray it. Got this bad boy all masked up, and yes, I didn't mask it up here just to prove a point. I'm not painting up there. But I also wanted to create an area on the side right there, and then this area is going to get dark green, this is going to get dark green, and a little bit of the area right up here on the side. So uh, create some extra little detail st stuff with my brain. And we're coming with this dark green, which is really the same color. Matter of fact, I started out when I mixed this, these colors up, that uh, bluish green, the light one up there, I started with that color and all I did was add more vile green and candy black to it and a little bit of decay. That's how I got this really dark, dark, nastier green. Now I want this to be darker up in this upper area because it casts a shadow there naturally. I'm not going to get really super wet because what happens when it gets it wet? Man, it bleeds. So. And kind of do streaks to make it, you know, kind of follow the whole wood grain thing still. Get it very dark up in there. Because that area would be the most protective against wear and tear because it's underneath the, the ledge. So any water damage would be, would be protected from it. So it would naturally be better looking right there. And am I gonna do any of the scotch brighty stuff? Of course I am, why wouldn't I? Just a little bit. I was a little bit wet still there, but that actually works still. Cool. I'm kind of happy with that. I kept the airbrush very close that way. If I'm back here spraying, I could get airbrush uh, uh, overspray up there. I really don't want that. So I'm going to go ahead and unmask this and we'll see where we're at and go from there. Hey, we're back and I unmasked it and then uh, kind of remasked some areas. I'm going to show you how we're going to use a touch-up brush instead of using the airbrush in some of these areas. Remember, I want a little bit of a red stripe in there. And so I've got my paint from the PPS cup from the gun and I'm just dipping a little brush that I stole. I went and looked over in Chris's stash and I'm going to come in and just brush some red in this area. Not super wet, at the same time I'm not trying to dry brush it. I don't want it to creep under the tape. If it does, I can always fix it. So I got really wet there so it might creep now. And I just want to bring this stripe down. It's a little bit easier just to, instead of doing double masking and spraying, just to come in and brush it on. A little PPS cut makes a nice little little cup to dip your brush into. Let's go ahead and unmask this and see how bad we bled. A little bleeding here. Ooh, we got a bad one there. Whoa, look at that. Okay, perfect example on head. Let's fix some bleeds. Got my rag right here. First, I'm going to clean this brush a little bit. Just going to put some 4020 on that brush, clean it real nice. And then let's go ahead and take a damp section of this rag. Yeah, that was a bad bleed. See how we'll come in and we can wipe it. It's much better if I had a Q-tip, but eh, we can make do. I'm just going to use my finger. What I'm going to do on this, I'm not really that concerned because I'm going to come in and do a little bit of a black outline to punch this. I'll just hand brush a black outline then, but you saw how, how bad that bled. I'm not even going to mask this one. I'm going to do it by hand. Hey, live and learn. Let's come in here and just hand brush a little 
eighth inch line right there, and that's much nicer. It's gonna it's just bleed a little bit all on its own. See, it's finding those little 3D print grooves, and it's kind of going like little channels. So that's another reason why earlier I was talking about not really wanting to use a brush on this whole piece, because you get so many bleeds on it. But in this area, it's not that bad. It actually looks pretty good. And definitely want to use this brush to do some touch-ups if there's any other areas. Like, I've got a couple areas here that lifted, maybe a little, little dots. It's just, there's too many of those dots. I like streaks, I don't like dots. Come along here and hit those. Another nice thing the brush can do, besides doing these touch-ups, I'm going to come over here and kind of bring this line back that I lost when I wiped it. And we'll come in with black on the outside of that, and I'll clean that up nicely. Just wanted that. So this will all be black right here on the outside of that. Um, clean up a couple more of these little dots here and there. You can use your finger to wipe off any excess. And I'll show you what else you can do with this brush since we got it out here. Let's go ahead and take this darker green color that we just sprayed on the sides. And if you guys know on the Boba Fett mask, there's two little arrows. It's almost like he has a, a rewind and a forward, like a, like a rewind and a fast forward on the front of his helmet. I haven't quite figured that one out yet, but I'm just going to brush those in. It's right there in the middle of his helmet. And just freehand that sucker in there. Now, if you're not comfortable with that, you, you want to mask it off and spray it, you can. But some of it's fun just to kind of come in and do some freehand. Since I've got this color out, might as well see if I need any little touch-ups any darker areas up in this dark area here where that dark green is. I can kind of bring that along. That's looking pretty good. There you go. So I'm going to come in next and uh, I've got to mask off and spray this black. So I'll have my black out and then when with the black out we'll also spray black up here on top of that and I'll also do a black band on both sides of that to clean up that red, but also kind of punch it out. I'm going to leave that silver there on the sides. We're going to make this just all black to make it stand out and tie in with that. Cool? Okay, I didn't want to torture you with any more masking, uh, so I just tortured myself with the masking. And mask this area off so I could do the black right in the center of that, and a little bit of area up here, so I'm going to get a little black up on the top of that. Uh, the rest of the areas I'll just do by, uh, by small brush. So I'm going to come in and I mixed up some illustration black with some, you got it, UVLS 4050, my favorite binder. And we'll just come in and spray it very lightly. I don't want to get too wet, I don't want any bleeds on this. But I would like to get some of that underlying white to come through here and there. So I'm not going to make it all solid black. That would look weird since nothing is solid on this whole piece. Mostly dark on the top because we're going to get a little bit of a, dark sh a drop shadow up there. So I can blend that and then just kind of freehand spray around there. Let's do a little bit of that stippling. Remember shake, pull the trigger back. Put that in the air. It's, whoop. Don't do that. There we go. A little black on the bottom there. We're looking good. I'm happy with that. And let's get the black up on the top here. Cool. This is really too difficult to get the Scotch Bride in. You know? To, to, to snick it in there, I mean, I could put it in there, it would only be in this area right here, you know? So, we won't use it. Yeah, 
let's go ahead and unmask it very carefully. Most carefully as I was doing all the rest. Any of it lifts, I got my magic brush. I can come in and touch it all up again. Trick on unmasking. If you yank it up really fast, you might you know, lift the paint, but if you pull back against itself, the odds are pretty low that you're going to pull paint. Get this little sucker off of here. Come on. There we go. Cool. And that's most of our color there. And uh, I will take my brush now and start doing some trim work, a little detail work. And come along this side here. Now, if this swells at all because the paint's going into the grooves, that's okay. It's like, kind of look weird if we had a perfect line on this tiki that's thrashed anyway. There you go. There's a little bit of a nice edge there. And then I'm going to come in with the brush, see if I missed any areas in here with the black. I didn't. Looks pretty good. And, uh, and I'll continue on this other side over here. I already kind of experimented with the black a little bit on that side. This that side has a lot of grooves in it, so it really wants to follow those grooves. So I'm going to make the line a little bit thicker here, and I'll probably redo the other side a little bit thicker too. Just wanted to create a little black edge here that just shows a, not, a little bit more contrast than I would have with that red against the, the wood grainy white. And because it's such a rough surface, the brush doesn't want to get all the way down deep inside of there. So if we get a little bit too wet, it will just start wicking. Let me try and dab that so it doesn't wick too much. I don't mind a little bit. That. I'm going to do the same thing up on top here. And you can just literally go as crazy as you want to get on any detailing you do on this tiki. Don't have a lot of touch ups on it. Kind of happy with it. I am going to do a little line right here, right there on the top, and a little right there because when it dries, it's going to look like a little shadow, like that's an indentation, which is supposed to be. And then I'm going to go around the base of this to show that it's kind of separate. That's about it. The black back there. Now if I wanted to, I could even come along and do a really thin line here. I don't think I'm going to. I'm kind of digging the way it looks. I want it to have a, a weathered look. If I do too many outlines, it starts looking too, too fancy and, and uh, whatever Ewoks decided to carve out this, uh, you know, sculpture of Boba Fett, uh, probably weren't too good anyway. They don't have, you know, they have four fingers, so they probably can't do line work. No pinstriping in the Ewok colonies. Oh, I just saw a little area that needs some black. There we go. So that's about it. Um, one thing I am going to do to protect it, but also give it a little bit of a shine, is I'm going to hit it with some of that 4050. Now, normally you'd say, oh, well, yeah, but that's the gloss. Well, it's such a rough surface, 
And if I hit a light coat on there, I won't have to worry about it, um, it getting really glossy. I kind of want a little bit of gloss to it, like, it, like it's varnished or shellac. Well, if I make it look too matte, it might be kind of dead looking. Plus, the 4050 offers a much better adhesion and much better protection to the surface. Let's say I was going to take this and hang it outdoors. Uh, I would want that 4050 to be the final coat of clear on this. And, uh, but that's about it. So we got our, our Tiki FET colors all done. And uh, I'm going to basically uh, load up my gun with some of that 4050. And the uh, next thing you're going to see is me uh, putting a little cl clear coat on this sucker. Okay, I've got about probably two good wet coats of the 4050 I put on here about 15 minutes ago, using just air to dry it, so it's it's dry to the touch, no problem. Give it a good hour before it's really fully cured, and uh, but it's ready to hang up, and we're done with it. I was real happy the way this came out, all the traditional colors of Boba Fett on here, and I actually remember I said I wasn't going to do it, I did it. I kind of came in and brushed in a little bit of the black on there and then brought the red up over the top just to make it look finished, made it pop better. Really happy with the way this is and like the back, yeah, yeah, I know. I didn't say I didn't care, but I guess I do. I made it nice and pretty back here. These 3D prints are killer. It even has a little built-in thing to hang it up with. Lightweight, looks cool, looks just like a little wooden tiki and that's what we were going for. Uh, again, thank you again to uh, Walter uh, Coacita from Counts Customs for 3D printing this for me. I really appreciate it. And uh, well, I'll be talking to my son Simon about maybe cranking some of these out. So uh, keep an eye out on either Airbrush Paint Direct or uh, Craig Fraser Studios and we'll let you know when when uh, this and some other 3D goodies down the road are going to be available. Uh, so I hope you've enjoyed the, the Tiki Fet and uh, my name is Craig Fraser here at the Craytex Colors facility in Connecticut and I will see you next time. <laughs>